I was growing up, the statement was that when the summer months come, you see two things, straw hats and early Shabbos. Well, in our times, the straw hats have really basically disappeared, but we do still see the early Shabbos. And the early Shabbos has a unique set of halachas that I want to discuss today, which really we could say in a certain sense transcends our chaim. Actually, it, it applies to almost dal chal kishulchan Now, the early Shabbos in itself is very simple. The, the Gemara Rosh Hashanah tells us that there's a mitzvah of teisefes yom kippurim of adding extra to yom kippur. And the Levush says, there's no doubt about it, that applies to Shabbos as well. Because don't forget, the more Shabbos we have, the more bracha we have. The Medjish in the beginning of Bereshis, in fact, adds another facet, another purpose of early Shabbos. We don't want to come too close to Shabbos because we might violate the Shabbos unknowingly. You know, we have many milas, but punctuality and being on time is not really one of our strong points. And says the Medjish, in order to avoid a possible chil Shabbos, we have to give Shabbos a early start. So there's no doubt about it that the early Shabbos is not only sanctioned, but recommended by the Torah HaKadosh. But what I want to try to focus on this morning is understanding how it works. Typically, especially today, there's even earlier sh Shabbos when they have the early mincha, and your person could be davening Mayrev at 7.15, 7.30, when it's a good hour and a quarter before Shkia, and his next door neighbor is faithfully mowing his law on the covered Shabbos, because it's Vaday Friday. So how do we take the liberty of davening and making Kiddush when it's still Friday? I, early Shabbos, that that might mean not doing malacha, keeping that barrier to avoid chilul Shabbos. But where do we see that you're allowed to make daven, say mekadesh Shabbos, and make kiddush and be yoyt to the suda on Friday afternoon? Undoubtedly, it's still Friday afternoon. And the truth is, if early Shabbos does work, wouldn't it be the most welcome early Shabbos? to make early Pesach? You ever think about that? We're always racing the clock to finish the Kazayas, uh, the, the Afikoyimim before Chatzois. Wouldn't it be wonderful to make early Pesach? And yet we don't do it. So, So why early Shabbos? Yes, early Pesach not. And I must mention that the Goyen, the Bilna Goyen is quoted twice in my Rab, the Bialocha quotes him in Hilchas Mayrim, who says not to daven early Meir on Shabbos, because it's too early. But as we know, the Minig Yisrael is to make early Shabbos, and the source is the Gemara that you probably learned with Rabbi Gadazim this morning. In Brachas Chav Zayin, the Gemara says that Rav davened early Meir on Friday night. Then the Gemara says Shmuel, not only in daven early Meir, but Shmuel actually made Kiddush and ate the Suda early Friday. So, and this is quoted in Shulchan Aruch, Reish Samach Zayin. But now we are still left with these two questions to deal with. First of all, how does it work? How do, do you make Kiddush, Davar Mayrev, have a Suda when it's still Friday? And if it does work, why is Pesach different? So here we come to what I think is the Yisoy that's going to give us enough guidance to deal with all of our questions. And basically, this is the unique ability of a Yid to turn Heta into Issa, or perhaps more specifically, to turn Choyl into Kodesh. We have a mouth that's Kodesh HaKadoshim, and a mouth that says that this piece of meat is Asa, I'm making a nether that it's Asa. It becomes Asa. Not Asa to my friend, because the meat is live kosher. But he has the ability to turn Choyl into Kodesh and to turn Het into Issa. Says the Levush, just like a person can make a nether and he can take a piece of meat that's perfectly kosher and make it also to himself, that is the mechanics. That is the underlying principle of early Shabbos. A Yid, by saying, I'm a Kabbal Shabbos, has the ability to turn Friday into Shabbos. 
In other words, just like Neda is a private Issa, early Shabbos is my prerogative. I decide to make early Shabbos. But now you'll ask me, so if that's the case, why don't we make early Pesach? So that is not my question. That's Taisus and Pesachim's question. And Taisus says that regarding Pesach, since the Torah requires us to eat matzah balayla hazeh at night, and if you make early Pesach, it's not layla. Now, what does Taisus mean? And Tyre Eden, this is the Yisait of today. Taisus is saying a very profound state, making a very profound statement. And that, I think, is that we have the ability to take Friday and turn it into Shabbos. That's Taisus Shabbos. Just like this Taisus, Taisus, Yom HaKippurim, you could make Friday into Shabbos. But Laila is a Matthias. Laila is a factual acknowledgement that it's dark and it's night. Friday afternoon, it's not Laila. Toysus is saying that if the mitzvah is eating matzah on, at night, if you make early Pesach, it might be Pesach, but it's not Laila. Factually, it's day. It's way before the Shkia. So when it comes to early Shabbos, you could have Shabbos by day. It's not a stira. So therefore, when you make early Shabbos, it is Shabbos. And Shabbos allows you to dab a mayrib on Shabbos and make Kiddush and be to the Suda. But Pesach requires Laila. And even after you make early Pesach, it's not Laila. And I'll give you an interesting uh, analogy. Imagine someone hears the weather report that it's supposed to be a very hot Friday afternoon, unbearably hot, but Friday night it's going to cool off. So he decides, I have a great idea. I'll make early Shabbos and it'll cool off. Right? Wrong. Because the early Shabbos doesn't make it in tonight. It makes it into Shabbos. But it's still day and still you're, you're, you're going to have that heat. Imagine someone's arthritis acts up at night. Does it act up when it makes early Shabbos? No. Why not? Here's the critical difference. Shabbos is on Friday afternoon, but it's not Lila. And I would like to give you three examples, and then we'll go halach lemaisa throughout Dalach al The marshal in a tshub and simon yud gimel was asked, if I'm allowed to make early Shabbos, and I'm yoytze the davening, so why do they say you have to say over Krishna at night, What's wrong with me just being Yaitza Krishna like I was Yaitza Meir? Says the Marshal that Krishna is Tully in Laila. And it's not Laila. So you can't be Yaitza when you dive an early Meir. Why are you Yaitza Meir and Suda? That's Pashit because it is Shabbos. In other words, you know, there's a, as a, as a slogan, it's become the, the slogan of Kirva Chaikim. Turn Friday into Shabbos. Turn Friday night into Shabbos, actually. But I'd like to borrow that. And that is the description of early Shabbos. That we have the ability to turn Friday into Shabbos. But we don't have the ability to turn Friday day into night. Because it's not night. 7.30, 8 o'clock, even 8.30, if she is 8.35, is not Laila. So the Mashal is explaining that it's early Shabbos and you yaitz at Mayrib and you yaitz at Suda. But Krishna is totally in Laila. The second insight, which I heard Rabbi Gadisman just mentioned, is a mitzvah boy. Now, a mitzvah boy, as soon as the mitzvah, as soon as it becomes Laila, he could dab him for the Yomit. But here was the question he asked to the Bach if he makes early Shabbos and it's 7 30 and he wants to dab a Mayrib, could he dab a Mayrib for the Yomit? Says the Bach emphatically, no. Because regarding Bar Mitzvah, he's not Bar Mitzvah yet. He's Bar Mitzvah Friday night, not Shabbos. Friday night is approximately an hour after Shkia. So the Bach says, <laughs> Early Shabbos makes it Shabbos on Friday. But since on Friday is still a few hours before Bar Mitzvah, halachically, this big boy is a baby. Because he has not yet reached his bar mitzvah. His bar mitzvah is Friday night. And the fact that he made early Shabbos doesn't change the mitzvah. It's the reality that it's still Friday night. And the last of the Gdali Achreinim 
the marshal himself in the Tshuva Simon Samaches, was asked about making early Shmini Yatzeres. Be a great idea. You get an early start. Says the marshal, we face a unsolvable problem. If we make early Shmini Yatzeres, of course, we're going to sit in the sukkah. We're going to have a quandary about making a Leishiva sukkah. Because technically, we don't make a, a, a Leishiva sukkah on Shmini Yatzeres. Because, of course, as Imara says, we sit without a Leishiva sukkah. But actually, it's still, uh, it's still a Shana Rabba. Because you made early Shemit Atzeres doesn't mean to change that it lost its identity of Ashana Rabba. And Ashana Rabba, you do have to make a Leishiva Sukkah. In fact, your next door neighbor who didn't make Shemit Atzeres, he's sitting in the Sukkah now. He has to make a Leishiva Sukkah. How could you not? So the Marshal says, because of this problem, let's not make early Shemit Atzeres. But the insight is valuable for our understanding of early Shabbos. Early Shabbos, you're turning Friday into Shabbos. But it doesn't change the actual status of the day. It is still day and not night. Now, it's noteworthy that Taz wonders, if you made it Shmini Atzeres, so why don't we say it's no longer Hishan Rabba? But here, in a pretty rare situation, the Sharetzian quotes more than a half a dozen Achreinim that strongly reject the Taz. And here's the point, because that is the understanding of early Shabbos. Early Shabbos works that it doesn't change the status of the physical status of the day. It is still day, but Shabbos is able to become on Friday. So now let's apply this to Halacha Lamaisa in the many different questions that come up. And as we'll see, it really touches upon, believe it or not, not just Arachaya, but Yeridea, Ebenezer, Chayishim, the first question I should mention, I, we can't give it equal time, but is early Shabbos 100% lechat chila? So I can't say that. I can't say yes. Because as I mentioned, the Vilna Goyen was against the early Mayriv on Shabbos. Rabbi Yashiv has a tshuva where he says in Eretz Yisrael, we don't allow the early Shabbos. Now this was a long time ago, obviously. Lately it has become more popular, but Rabbi Yashiv as a stipler, did not recommend making early Shabbos in Eretz Yisrael, apparently because Eretz Yisrael was, the, was based on Minhagi Agra, and the Gra was, was not in favor of the early Shabbos. What's interesting, there is in the Maiser Rav HaSholem, there's a quote from Ableiv Chosid Mi Vilna, who was one of the great Talmidim of the Vilna Goyen, and he says that a person that does not make early Shabbos is a mitzvah katana and a veira gadoyla. Very weird lotion. And he explains, it's a mitzvah katana because you're honoring the sheet of the Vilna Goyen by not making early Shabbos. But it's an Avera Gedoyla of a lack of Shalom Bayis and Sar Balechayim. In other words, he realized that it's very difficult to keep, make Shabbos in the right time. You have children or grandchildren, and then the Suda is not enjoyed by the younger part of the family. They miss the Suda. So basically, we have to realize that it is Minig Yisrael to make early Shabbos. If someone has the, follows the Minig Hagra, he would have to not make early Shabbos. We'll soon see there's an Eitzah that even would satisfy the Goyen Shita. But definitely we could say that the Minig Yisrael, and it's not a, a current Minig, like, you know, straw hats and early Shabbos, like I mentioned. It's sanctioned by the Gemara, Shulchan Aruch, and the Maila is, we have more brach in our lives. The early Shabbos may, means we're bringing Shabbos much earlier than the actual Zman. The next point I wanted to cl clarify, and today we see it's becoming much more popular. People are very mocked with the Davin Mincha Erev Shabbos before the plag. In other words, when I was still young, there was typically Mincha 7 o'clock, followed by Shalash, followed by Kabbalah Shabbos. Today we see that there's a Mincha before the plag, then there's a break, and then there's Kabbalah Shabbos. What is the purpose and what is the objective of making Mincha Erev Shabbos before the plag? So here we come to an important facet of early Shabbos. And basically, to put it bluntly, we are not allowed to make early Mairev. We can't make early Shachris. A person wakes up 2.30 in the morning and Davin Shachris, it's a Baruch HaVatolah. You can't make early mincha, mincha at, at 11.30 a.m. It's too early. 
So how does early Meyer work? If you say it's early, then it's too early. So the answer is that we are not making early Meyer literally. That's a misnomer. The Mishnah in Brachis, the Shechon Aruch quotes it in, in, in Reish Lamed Gimel, has the Shita Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says that the Zman Mincha on a daily basis is before the Plag. After Plaga Mincha, which is approximately an hour and a quarter before Shkia, but Rabbi Yehuda is before Mincha, Mincha has to be before the Plag. After Plag is the Zman Lechatchila to Davim That would mean, let's say, uh, in this time of the year, Let's say plag is around seven o'clock. So his man mincha goes until seven o'clock. And then after plag and mincha, seven and, and, and beyond is man mairu. But the Tanakama holds, not like that, that his man mincha goes until shkia, like we know, and after shkia, sometimes after shkia is mairu. Frek the Gemara, so who's Allah like? There's a very big difference. What's Allah like? It says the Gemara, the Ovid Kemar Ovid, the Ovid Kemar Ovid. Both, or better yet, each she, any Shita is acceptable. Both are acceptable. But you have to be consistent. If you want to go to Rabbi Yehuda, that's fine. But you have to make sure to David Mincha before the plag on the winter also. And that's challenging. Let's say around three o'clock is already plag. But if you are faithful to Rabbi Yehuda Shita and always David Mincha before the plag, you could have a marriage lechatchila after the plag, without reservation. But here's the problem: most of us, or probably all of us, sometime daven mincha after plag, especially during the winter. We daven mincha at 3 30, 4 o'clock, even four fifteen, which is before shkia, but after the plag, and that would not satisfy Rabbi Huda's opinion. But especially. When if we daven mincha, let's say this coming Shabbos, if we daven mincha at seven o'clock, and then daven Kabbalah Shabbos and Ma'ariv, both mincha and Ma'ariv will be in the same time zone of after plag, and that's what's called a tarte disasri. You are inconsistent. You are contradictory, because if you identify after plag as man mincha, you just just daven mincha. So how could you go on Dava Mayr? So then the Mayr is early, and the Mayr would be analogous to davening Shachris 2.30 in the morning, and you're not Yaitza. So that's why the Minig has become to Dava Mincha before the plag, and the range of 6.30, and certainly if you Dava Mincha Gedoyla at 1.40, you're certainly Yaitza. And then you will have the liberty of davening Mayr at after 7 sometime after the plag, so then you davi mincha before the plag, ma'ariv after the plag, and you satisfy Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. So therefore, the early mincha, which daven sometime before the plag, is certainly very highly recommended. There are those, many shuls daven typically seven o'clock mincha, followed by Kabbalah Shabbos. I the tarter is sasri. So the Sharetzi and the Chavetz Chaim and Sharetzi and quotes the sheet of the Derech HaChaim, that suggests that when it comes to early Shabbos, maybe there is no Tartar Sasri. Because Friday, Mincha, you daven after Plag, that's true. But once you made Shabbos, you're on a different zone, and a different planet. You're in planet Shabbos. So it's not really contradictory to daven Mincha before the Plag and Mayrib on Shabbos. But the Mr. Burr is not happy with that. And that's why the Minig of many B'nai Torah is to try to daven Mincha before the Plag, so you're safe, and then Ma'ariv after the plot. Now, the truth is, ideally, this is not perfect either. Because the Gemara, Shulchan Aruch, supposed to be not, not supposed to have a tarot to the Sasri ever. Not just in one day, but in your lifetime. So that's why during the week, we don't make early Ma'ariv, even if you have a before the plot. This is a special permission given when you're making early Shabbos, and the benefit so that says the Rav Shechon of the early Shabbos allows us to overlook the Tarte de Sasri from day to day. We are, we are happy that you're not a, a steer in the same day. And basically, that's the justification of the early Shabbos. So again, the early Shabbos Mayrev is really a misnomer. It's not early Shabbos. It's the early Mayrev is davening on the right time after Plaga Minch. Now, I had a Shiloh once where someone davened Someone was a very much a 
Mincha Vidayla first. He always have a Mincha during the winter, let's say 12.30, during the summer, 1.40. One Arab Shabbos, he was busy, something came up, and he couldn't have a Mincha Gedayla. But no harm done, he could have a later. But to, here's the problem. He made early Shabbos, totally forgot to have a Mincha because he's not programmed to have a Mincha at that time. I guess he assumed he'd have a Mincha. He'd have a Kabbalah Shabbos, he'd have a Mairev, and after Mairev, he, he realized, I don't believe it. I have a Mairev for Shabbos already. I didn't have a Mincha yet. So he asked the friend, what should I do? So the friend said, what's your problem? This, is, this took place in, in Brooklyn, you know, in Borough Park or Flatbush, wherever you live. There are probably hundreds of minyanim going on at 8 o'clock. You could have a mincha with uh, so many different shul. What's your problem? But that friend was incorrect. Because this person, that daven mayrib, he's holding now on Shabbos. He can't go now and daven mincha of Arab Shabbos, a regular mincha of choyal, with a tzibah that's davening mincha of choyal. Because his location is Shabbos. And therefore, he definitely cannot daven a regular mincha to make a what he missed. What was this tashlum malacha? Oh, good, good. What he will do is he will have to make tashlumin. And the alacha tashlumin is it takes the identity of the tefillah that preceded it. So he'll have to make another mayriv of Shabbos. Thank you, Rabbi Gadzman. So that would be the, the right course of action. But the beauty is that for this person, Really, it's Friday afternoon, and he could daven. The, the, in fact, a big part of Klai Yisrael are davening mincha Friday afternoon. But his location dictates that for him to daven mincha would be a tar to the sasri, and that would be totally unacceptable. I did tell this person that if you daven mincha, you daven your tashlumah with the tzibur as davening mincha, you could hope that that would be at least feel of a tzibur, even though it's a very different shvain esra. But there are ten yidin davening, Mr. Gura. Mention such a shita that if you daven with ten yidin shmanesra, maib, even though your shmanesra is very different, they're davening mincha, you're davening Shabbos, but that would have some semblance at least of a early of a tefila b'tzibur. I'll tell you a beautiful um, thought. The the Imre Emes asked the Kajiglav and the Eretz Tzvi, the Chubz Eretz Tzvi, a very penetrating question. Chasidim typically daven mincha. Erev Shabbos, a few minutes or more than a few minutes after Shkia. So he asked the Kajik lover, what do Chassidim do? What do we do? He said, because he wanted the Chassidim, what do we do about Mimakabal Tesef Shabbos? You have to make Shabbos, right? And, and you can't make Shabbos 40 minutes after Shkia because that's almost, that's what Safiq Laila. So you, apparently you have to make Shabbos a little bit before Shkia. So the Hadi go Davin Mincha after Mimakabal Tesef Shabbos. Your location is Shabbos. How could you have a Friday mincha on Shabbos? So the Eretz Svi said a brilliant analysis. And he said that there are two benefits, or better yet, two options in the early Shabbos. There's the minimal basic early Shabbos as a barrier not to come to Malacha. Like I told you from the Medrash, make early Shabbos so that you won't be late and chashon be mechal Shabbos. And then there's the more beneficial early Shabbos, where you make it itzumei shal yoyim, you turn Friday into Shabbos, you daven, and you have Kiddush. So says the Eretz Tzvi, Chassidim would have to be makabal teisef a Shabbos a little before Shkia, but it's a limited Kabbalah Shabbos. It's only Kabbalah Shabbos regarding not doing malacha, but it doesn't take on the identity of the day of Shabbos. It's still basically Friday afternoon, and therefore they are allowed to daven mincha they just don't do malacha, but it doesn't have the kedusha Shabbos like it does have for the rest of us that make early Shabbos, be itzumei shel yoyim, as opposed to the limited Shabbos of Prisha mi malacha. Another very interesting question. Someone davened early, it was during the Svira period, and the Gabbai dutifully announced, don't forget to say Krishma and say Svira Bizman. And he basically shrieked, I don't believe it. Last night, Thursday night, he didn't say Sphira. And now he remembered after he daven early Mayrib on Friday. And he wanted to know, can I still count Sphira for Thursday night? In other words, everybody's worried about saying Sphira on Friday night in an hour or so. He's still worried about Sphira Thursday night. 
No, Yidin, what would you say? The answer is very posh. I thought you could say Svira of Thursday night. Of course, I'll say it without a bracha. Because really, even though he made early Shabbos, it is still Friday afternoon. He turned Friday into Shabbos, but he still is, it's still Friday. The calendar day is still Friday. And he's allowed to count the sphere of Thursday night, the belated sphere of Thursday night on Friday without a bracha. And then hopefully he'll remember to say sphere on Friday night as the Friday night. A very serious problem is the following that someone once asked me, and this is one of the times that we like to make a bracha, Shalai Rob. His wife made early Shabbos like he did, but she didn't know anything about plag. And she basically tzinded licht around 6.30. Now, plag is, again, closer to 7, but certainly 6.30 before plag amincha. And then someone said, you know, it's not good. If you want to make early Shabbos, it has to be at least plag amincha. So here she was, a woman that tzinded licht with a bracha. She thought she's in Shabbos, and she was told that it's not Shabbos. So the question is, how early can you make early Shabbos? So the Mishtabura in two places says, a person that's Makabal Shabbos before Plaga Mincha is an effort and futility. If the Ish had sinned licht, it was the brachal of Atola, you're not Yoitz of the Neiris, she technically could blow out the Neiris, but you have to light again after Plag. In other words, Mishtabura says, the earliest Shabbos is Plaga Mincha. Now this is troubling because it's not so Pashit. The Chumas Adeshen, that I'm sure you saw earlier in Simon Aleph, described the early Shabbos of yesterday when they made Dava Meir, they had the Suda, and they went for a walk, and the sun was shining brilliantly. And his Lushen is they made it four or five hours before this man. Evidently, the Trumz Adeshin made a very early Shabbos that was even before Plaga Mincha. The Or HaShulchan writes, you could make early Shabbos even before Plaga Mincha. But what I found beautiful the Torah Shabbos explains, since early Shabbos is a product of my personal nether, it works out a nether, I can make a nether whenever I want. I could make a nether on this piece of meat or, or doing this action. So why can I make early Shabbos even before Plaga Mincha? So he's using the identity of early Shabbos as a nether to, to basically relieve any minimum amount of time for early Shabbos. So when this person asked me, what should he do? His wife's in the licht before plag. So I told him, according to the Mishnah Bura, it's not Shabbos, she could blow it out. She must light again. It was a brachal vatel, unfortunately. And according to the Archa Shulchan and Jumas Adesh and others, it's Shabbos and she can't blow it out. How early? Oh, How so early could he do question. this? Good question, good question. I'll get to that. So it, it seems to be something close to Chatzois, but not Plaga Mincha. But here's the, here's the quandary, because what would you tell this person? Light the Mishtabura, you run Yaitza, light again. Light the Archashochen, it's Shabbos, it's Chilul Shabbos. So to play it safe, we would have to tell the husband to light over Bizman. But I wouldn't recommend that this woman should actually be Mechal Shabbos, even though according to Mishtabura, it's not Shabbos. But the Archashochen sheet is something you can't just neglect. But what I would tell you, Yidin Tyra, is very important. If you do make early Shabbos, you don't, we can't expect the, the B'nai Abayas, the women, to know the Zman of Plaga Mincha. Please leave a list of the Zman of Plaga Mincha from the first early Shabbos until the last one, and then the women will be able to check the Zman, but they're not expected to know Plaga Mincha. You know, today we run to Mincha at 6.30 to dive with the early, pl- the, the Mincha before the Plaga. So the women say, oh, my husband's running to Mincha. My husband's always late. If he's late, I'm late. Let me light right now. But that doesn't work because he's running to make the early p- Mincha before the plag, which is still before the plag. So if you want to make an early Shabbos, be a responsible spouse. Leave the Zman of a plag beginning from the earliest, early, early Shabbos until the end. Question, how would you deal with this next question? A person comes home from his early Shabbos and he's really shabbos and he's really in the Kedusha Shabbos, and he realizes to his great dismay, he did not put on the oven, and the food's going to remain cold. Can he ask his next door neighbor, who, as we said earlier, is faithfully mowing his lawn, because he's on Friday afternoon, you know, zone, can he ask a yid to do malacha de raisa for him right now? So what comes to us, to our mind, impulsively is, well, 
If I can't ask a guy to do malach on Shabbos, how could I ask a yid? But that is absolutely incorrect. The Shulchan Aruch in the end of Reish Samach Gimel says clearly, even though you made early Shabbos, if it's still before this man, you're allowed to ask another yid to do malacha, even the Raisa, on your behalf. The Imtaima, if you would like to ask, what's the logic? Heretz is very, very simple, especially if we have our better understanding of the early Shabbos. Early Shabbos is like my nether. I made a nether not to eat a piece of meat. I could give it to my next door neighbor, and he could relish it. There's nothing wrong with it. Early Shabbos is my Shabbos, but it doesn't impose on my neighbor. So why can't you do malacha for me? I, why is Amir la'akum asa? That's because when it's Shabbos for the entire world, it's not a personal Shabbos. It's a Shabbos for the world. So the guy is included in that status. The guy can't keep Shabbos, but now it's Shabbos for the entire world. It's not my personal Shabbos. So this Shabbos involves Goyim and Yidin. So this that a guy can't do malach is only when it's Shabbos proper. But when it's my personal Shabbos, I could ask a guy and have the even a year to do malach the raisa for me let's Shabbos. Next question, moving on a little bit to the do's and don'ts of the early Shabbos. The question is, when in fact is it allowed to eat the Suda? So Rabbi, God, as I mentioned, and I would like to clarify that a little bit, the Sefer Hasidim writes in Simen Reish Samach Tes, even though you, you make the Suda Mibay Joim, you should eat a Kazayis at La, Balayla. And this, in other words, what he's saying is, basically, eat the Suda, but make sure you have a Kazayis at night, whatever night is by you, uh, 50 minutes at the Shkir, an hour, whatever your Zman Mayer is. Now, this is troubling, to put it mildly. Because if you tell me you could have a Mayer, and you could be Yitz a Kiddush, and you could be Yitz a Suda Shabbos, why do you have to have a, a Kazayis Balayla? I'm comfortable to say that it's Shabbos. I turned Friday into Shabbos. So why do I have to have a Kazayis Balayla? And the, in fact, the Taz takes strong exception to this. And if you think, like Alamdin, the Taz of the the Taz that insisted that early Shmina Tzeres negates the, the previous Aishana Rabba, it's Ois Aishana Rabba. So then it, here also it's Shabbos, some Yoy to the Suda. But the Mishnah does make mention of this Sefer Chassidim. But the question is why? And the answer is really based on the understanding of where the Sefer Chassidim is coming from. Sefer Chassidim understood that since the three Sudas were learned from the Pasik, that three times says the word Hayoim, so he understood it has to be in Shabbos proper, not in your homemade Shabbos. And that is not until it's Vade But I would like to tell you that the Mishnagura had a very, very mild endorsement of the Sefer Chassidim. His Lashon, and I quote, Lechatchila, Nachay, Nachay, Lachesh, Ledevreim. It's good, Lechatchila, if you can, to honor the Sefer Chassidim's Tzach. In other words, really he holds like the Taz, that you yoitza, and you don't have to stretch the Suda. Because, you know, personally, it always concerned me that people make early Shabbos, so they, they, could, they could have an early Suda with the family's participation and put the kids to sleep at a reasonable hour. Now you're going to tell your wife, we can't bench until 9.30. So what did I gain? And that's just going to take away from the practicality of the early Shabbos. And it seems to me that Mr. Brewer really didn't pass him like Sefer Chassidim. And I think the biggest raya is, because even the Sefer Chassidim is said, himself writes Kazayas. Now, if you know halacha, to be Yoytza Suda Shabbos, you have to have a minimal amount of, of pass of a Kabeya. And here he basically conceded that it's enough for Kazayas. I think it's only a Chumrah. And I would definitely take the Chayas of saying that if a person has a family and, they, and the wife wants to bench, she can't, can't understand, we're going to wait for 9.30 to bench. You could be saymich on the, what I told you, especially the Sefer Chassid, the, the Truma Sadesh that we said, they benched and they went for a walk. Obviously, he wasn't concerned about the Sefer Chassidim. And so definitely, if you could do it, Tavilech HaBrach, and how can't we do it? But if it's going to interfere with Shalom Bayis or Tzar Balei again, we're back to that starting point. And you could bench, because really, we pass in it's Shabbos, and you were Yitzhak Sudeshabis Bismar.
You're not. Could it have to be Pastafka, a libra to the Sefer Chassidim? So, yeah, that, that he definitely going. said yes. Yes, I heard you the idea earlier. I, I don't see that that, that anybody says that that, that it's lav dafka pas. His point is sort of to replay the suda, but again, it's only a chumra. I mean, I really, you know, I, I don't want to spend too much time with this, but I really believe that it's it, it's something yotzchar vasedi. You take away the whole appeal of the early Shabbos. Now, another point that I, that, I, that I'd like to mention is another ma'aseh shaya in our camp. We had the shaila once. Someone grabbed not from our camp, he came from the Bungalow County, he, and we make early Shabbos, and he was davening with us. In the middle of Kabbalah Shabbos, right, right before the Chodoidi, his child comes frantically. Mommy says, come on right away. He says, what do you mean come right away? There's a pipe broke, and we need to call a, we have to call a plumber, and she can't deal with it. You have to take care of it. So Shalom Bayes is calling. But he looked at me and said, what should I do? I, was, I made early Shabbos. I was Makabal Shabbos. The question is, what should he do? At this point, he's needed at home, but he basically made early Shabbos. So the question really is, Megay, for all of us, when we go to Shul, when we start Kabbalah Shabbos, at what point is it, does it become Shabbos? So the Shechon says that when you say Baruch of Meiriv, that's when Shabbos actually begins. Because again, Mincha is part of Friday, and Meiriv is the beginning of Shabbos. Says the Mechaba, but since the Minig is saying, Mizma Shil Yom HaShabbos, that is the start of Shabbos. The 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 the, the capital tilim mis mashiliyim Shabbos. Now you notice there's no mention of Kabbalah Shabbos as we know lechunaranana, and that's simply because the lechunaranana that we call Kabbalah Shabbos was the minig of the Rizal, and the Machaba didn't have that minig. But Mr. Brewer does does recognize our minig and says, but if you say boi chala Shabbos Malkisa, which is the end of lechadoidi. So that's, that signals Kabbalah Shabbos, because you're actually saying, I want Shabbos to start. Now, I should remind you, the Chunaranan is a beautiful group of kapit but there's no mention of Shabbos. That's not Kabbalah Shabbos. Even the Chagaydi is just warming up for the Shabbos. But what is the actual, the, when we bring Shabbos Lamaisa, Boyichala Shabbos Malkus. So I told this person, you really have no problem. You weren't in Kabbalah Shabbos yet. Go home, help your wife, and then dive in a regular matter. Or Kabbalah Shabbos, that is. But I'll tell you a more pressing problem that Rabbi God has been alluded to, but I'm going to show you the beauty of this tshuva. Someone asked the Ben Ishchai, the Torah Shema was written by the Ben Ishchai, the following question. He hired a worker Friday morning in his regular city. He went away for Shabbos. Let's say he went to Lakewood for Shabbos. He's in middle, he made early Shabbos. He dive in Meirev. Ate the Suda, Miller the Suda, and he realized he didn't pay his worker yet. And Yidin are very sensitive. The Mishnah Bav Metzia says it's a lav, it's an assay. The Zoya is frightening about someone who doesn't pay his work on time. And he wanted to pay his worker on Friday. But his location was Shabbos, uh, in the middle of singing Kari Boin. So he asked the Torah Lishma, is there any solution to my problem? And get ready for this. Says Torah Lishma, make a calculation. Can you? Go back home to your hometown, pay the worker, and then start Shabbos again. Start Kabbalah Shabbos. He said, yeah, I could do it. She said, do it. Now, this sounds bizarre, to put it mildly. I dava Meir, I made Kiddush, I'm middle of a Suda, and I'm going to take off my Shtraimel, whatever they wore in those days, and go and get on my horse and buggy and run back home and pay the worker. But you know what the answer is? Believe it or not, yes, you could do that. Because you could make Shabbos, that's a form of a nether. And every nether is revocable. You can make an, a piece of meat asa, and you're not the nether. So the Torah Lishma, the, the Ben Ishchai, is using the, the analogy of early Shabbos as a nether very literally. Now that gives you the liberty of retracting the Shabbos. And you put it, putting it back to Friday afternoon. Pay the worker, and then we makabal Shabbos again. Now, in essence, the Paiskim agree that a Yid could make a Taurus Nadarim on an early Shabbos, because it's only a nether. But in the Torah extreme case, many Paiskim question if that's really feasible, because you could say, I made early Shabbos, and now I'm going back to Friday. But what are you going to do about the Mayrib that you said, Mekadosh Shabbos, and the Kiddush that you made? How are you going to deal with that? You know, today we have a computer and we hit the, the delete or cancel button and it's gone. But how do you delete Shabbos, Mayrev, seven brachas in, in, in Shvanesra? Well, how do you delete the Kiddush that you made? 
So the Pais can say, if you are Makabal Shabbos, you said, I'm being Makabal Tesefes Shabbos, Biktu Shasa, and you started singing, Boy Yichala Shabbos Malach, she even said, she said, Miz Meishir, then it's still revocable because you're not going to turn brachas into brachas levatola. But in this extreme case, that's not advisable. But in our case, let's say the fella had already said Boyichala, Miz Moishir, and even said Baruch We could tell him to get a Bezdin, and I would certainly be on that Bezdin because this is definitely a valid Pesach. Get the Bezdin, there'll be Mataneda, you'll go back to Friday, fix your plumbing, and then start Shabbos once again. Another interesting question, and this is how we see it in recent years, has, has become very popular. And that is, Lamaisa, many people follow Minika Groh, and they don't want to have an early Maya. Now, again, we have no problem with that because Shmuel did it and Rav did it, but the Groh was the Groh. Is it a viable option to make Kabbalah Shabbos together with the Tzibar, after Kabbalah Shabbos, before Baruch go home, have a suda with the family, okay, bench, you can have, you won't be yoytzah to say v'chsidim z'chumrah, and come back and daven mayriv with the tzibah as davening bizman. So what you gained is, you daven, you made early Shabbos, satisfied the b'nei habayis, you daven mayriv bizman, you satisfied the going. And basically, this sounds like a wonderful idea. I heard from someone that was in America, when Rebbe was in America, that he did this to make early Shabbos. I guess he wanted to honor the going shita. And I understand that in Lakewood and Eretz Yisrael, with, uh, originally they would follow the Minik Agra, and they wouldn't make early Shabbos, but because of the need for, for, for the Shalom Bayis at home, they did this Eitzim. However, in the, there is a quote from the Gra himself that says you can't do this, because if the source of early Shabbos is patterned based on the Gemara, the Gemara said that Shmuel, Davin Mayrev, and then made the Suda. Oh, that's good. But how do you make your own order of Suda then Mayrev? So if it's not precedented in the Gemara, perhaps it's not an acceptable solution. Now this says Rabbi Itzel of Petersburg and the Chubas, Kri Yitzchak, is illogical and probably wrong. And the guy never said it. But listen to his beautiful, beautiful analysis of why it doesn't make sense. Because the, the question is, the Gemara said, Mayrib and then Suda. So how do you have a right to say Suda and then Mayrib? Says the pre Yitzchak, the Gemara is telling us a bigger Kiddush. Because really, when we make early Shabbos and we dab a Mayrib, which is Kiddush with Dvarim and Tzfila, and we have Kiddush, which is Kiddush ala Kois, both of our Kiddush with Dvarim take place on Friday afternoon. But says the Gemara, that's good enough. That's fine. That's your ability to turn Friday into Shabbos. So the Gemara is saying a bigger Kiddush, even though you have Kiddush Bidvarm in Davening and your Kiddush Bidvarm Ala Kais was on Friday, you're still Yoitza. But let's say you decide to be a little creative and you make early Shabbos. Have the Suda Miboy join. Your Kiddush Ala Kais was Miboy join. But you Daven Mayrib in Shul Kiddush Bidvarm Bitfila wasn't the right Zaman you're better off than the Gemara's early Shabbos. Because you have one Kiddush, the Betfila, in the right time. So Napshad, it's, it's questionable. It's even better. Why did the Gemara choose this sequence to, to, to accentuate the Kiddush? Even if you have both Kiddush Bidvarim, Mayrev, and Kiddush Alakai, it's good. But definitely this say that can be followed. And indeed, this has become a very popular alternative People dive it in their earliest Kabbalah Shabbos they could find, going for the Suda, and then they synchronize their benching that they could catch the Meir of Bisman and Shalom al Yisrael. And the last part of this sukya is the early Shabbos around the Shulchan Aruch. I'll tell you an amusing but true story. My, I brought my son to our Shraga, you know, my, actually now my son has, he's a father of a few children, Kinahara, but his first, my, my, my oldest son, I brought him to the first Meir that he ever davened. Because don't forget, the children, the little children don't have a Meir. But we had an early Meir because early Shabbos in our camp. And he was having Meir next to me, sitting next to me. And he came to Krishna, he pulls out his sitsis and he starts kissing his sitsis. And people are looking at him and says, hey, doesn't he have a father to teach him anything? What's this kid kissing his sitsis during Meir? Because it's not done. But the truth is, we have to really reconsider what's wrong with that. 
Because even though, as we explained, when we dive in at 7.30, it's Shabbos. It's real Shabbos. But it's still day. It's still a Risa, my son. So we could wonder why the rest of us don't kiss the tzitzit. My son was doing the right thing. So the answer probably is that it's not really Krishna that was saying this is only Kari Bataira, because they're not Yoytza Krishna at 7.30. So kissing tzitzit is associated with, with the real Krishna. But this is interesting, that regarding Reisa Moisai, it is still Reisa Moisai. I'll tell you why I stress this, but I had another beautiful Shaila, which was dripping with Yira Shamai. I remember like yesterday, you know what happened a number of summers ago, I was in the Ashraga dining room, and Bocha asked me the following question. It was 8.20, if, I, if, I, if, I, if my memory doesn't fail me. We had already finished my, and we had made, we had made Kiddush. And he told me he always puts on special Shabbos sitzes and makes a brach on them, typically. This Arab Shabbos, he forgot. He simply forgot to put on the Shabbos sitzes. So he wanted to know, could he go to his bungalow, put on the Shabbos sitzes, and make a brach on him? Now, this, this is a lumbish question, because his location was Shabbos. But then again, it's still vadayoyim. So why can you make a brach on sitzes vadayoyim? But I told them, you asked a good question. Because here we see an incredible chiddush, and I, I don't use that word lightly, of the Chumas Hadeshen in a different Chumas Chalik base, Simon Kufcha Balaf. And the Chumas Hadeshen has a consistent shita, which is a chiddush one after the other, that if you daven Mayriv, we have to treat your location as the new day. And if you didn't put on talus yet, you can't make a brach on talus after Mayriv, even though it's still Mayriv. If someone was terribly delayed and didn't put on tefillin yet, and already daven Mayriv, even though it's way before Shkia, he no longer could put on tefillin. He says the person was made daven Mayriv early and then found out the terrible news that he lost one of his Shiva Kravim. He can't start Shiva. It's not the first day, because once you dive a Meir, you're in the next day. He, in fact, says even more so, and that brings us to Ebenezer, the person made early, daven early Meir, and then wants to give a get. This is during week, of course. But he gave, made early Meir, but wants to give a get. He can't give a get, because we treat it like Laiva. And he has this Chiddush regarding, uh, I, I probably know, a Hefzik Tahara after, after an early Meir. His Shita is extreme. That once you made early marriage, even during the week, which we don't even do, but it's considered a new day regarding talis, tefillin, avelis, gitin, and taras hamishpach. Now, had this been a obscure shita, I wouldn't have mentioned it. But the shechanar we mentions it throughout in elchas tzitzis, in elchas tefillin, in elchas gitin, in elchas avelis, in elchas taras hamishpach. So I don't want. To, I would be remiss in not mentioning it. But I did tell this bracha, since the Mechaba does say not to make a bracha on the talus or, or tzitzis, put on your Shabbat talus because it's a hate, but don't make a bracha on it. We had a question once where a person made early Shabbos, and those make early Shabbos listen good, I think they gave it to many of us. And as every Elohi, before his wife, Tzindad Licht, he put on chal the table, they made Kiddush, and they had the suit that they benched. They went to go learn. He came home and he realized, I have a problem. Because he realized that he had finished the suit. And he wasn't marked through the Sefer Chassidim. He benched when it was still the Riboy Jain. Shabbos came. Ben Ashmoshes came. And the table was clean. They had already finished eating. The only thing that was on the table was the burning leichter. And now the question becomes, does his table become Muktzah? Because typically, a table that is supporting a Shabbos leichta is a boss to Muktzah. But we have the chal on the table, so that counteracts the bosses and makes it a bosses for Hetzel. But in this person's situation, the chal was there early, he benched early, and Ben Ashmoshes came, and Shabbos proper came, and there was no chal left because it was all gone. Is that table Muktzah? And says the Prima Godem, it probably is. Because regarding Muktzah, it's not totally in your personal Shabbos. It's totally, as the Gemara describes it very vividly, Migilis katsoi le ben ashmashis. And ben ashmashis is, is an absolute reality, which is not subjective to your early Shabbos. So if you want to have, if, if you do intend on moving the table, 
make sure there is something on the table, whether challah from Tamara Suda, hopefully a safe will do the trick. But remember, Hilchois buses is not totally in your personal Shabbos, it's totally in the Shabbos proper of the Ben Hashmashu, which is absolute. Another question that I found full of Yerash Shemayim, someone said, I would like to make early Shabbos, but I'm worried about my Meir Brochus. And that person asked a good question. And let me explain. As we know, there's a chiyah of some say even at the rice, in fact, based on a posik, of making Meir Brochus every day. The Gemara in Menachas points out that Shabbos typically runs a deficit because we have shortish Shemayim and we don't have 100 brachas throughout the Shabbos. So therefore, we're supposed to supplement the, the Meir brachas by having various uh, Ayinik Shabbos and making brachas. His question was, if I make early Shabbos, so I'm going to lose 22 brachas. I'm not going to go through the Chesh now, because trust me, if you count Meirev, Shemayin Esra, Tilchadayim, Hamoitzi, Kiddush, Benching, Kais of wine and the, and the Allah Geffen, 22 brachas we say from the beginning of early Shabbos until after benching. Now, if he made early Shabbos, he does that all, or before Tzais, and he's not mocked with the Sefer Chesidim, doesn't he lose 22 of those brachas? Because he made them on Friday afternoon. You turn Friday into Shabbos, but it's still Friday. How do you count them for your Shabbos quote of 100 brachas? And indeed, Ramay Sternbach and his Chuba says, and I saw that Tzela Chochma also says this, that this is enough reason to avoid making early Shabbos because you can't count the Maya, the, those 22 brachas into your quote of Meir brachas. But Rav Ozna does argue convincingly that just like when we bench, sometimes we have a longer Shalashudas and we bench after Tzais, we do count the benching into Meir brachas because Shabbos is a unit for itself, even if it's later than this man. So why can we also count the early Shabbos into the unit that's called Shabbos? So in other words, what he's really making a chiddush, but he's saying that the, the Meir Brachas on Shabbos does not begin from Tzais to Tzais. It begins from Kabbalah Shabbos until Yitzia Shabbos. Another question that we had, a person had yard site. I'm going to use this date because this is the actual Shaila not so long ago. Yud Tes Sivan was Shabbos. Is there any reason to refrain from making early Shabbos when he has yard side on Shabbos, Yud Tes Sivan. And the truth is, there is a reason from not making early Shabbos if you really want to daven for the Yomit on the actual yard side. And the logic is simple. Because let's say yard side again is Yud Tes Sivan with Shabbos, and you make early Shabbos. So you're allowed to daven Meir, there's no problem with that. But Rabbi Yid, Shemayim doesn't make early Shabbos. I mean, I don't know how that works in Shemayim. But the yard side is Yud Tes Sivan. And you didn't turn Yud Ches Sivan into Yud Tes Sivan. You made Shabbos on Yud Ches Sivan. So you're really depriving the Neshama from a Mayrv on the yard side. You're diving Mayrv on Yud Ches, which happens to be Shabbos. So I can't say it's wrong, but if someone wants to make sure all three tefillahs are set on the yard side, and he has yard side Jachal B'Shabbos, it would be advisable not to make early Shabbos. Someone asked me a beautiful Shaila. His son was by mitzvah on Shabbos. Again, I use the same date, but that's the date I know. Yud Tes Sivan is by mitzvah. Should he not make early Shabbos for that reason alone? Because his, his son will obviously dava Mayriv early, and that's when he's still a katan. Let him better dava Mayriv bizman, and he'll dava Mayriv as a godel. I told him, you're not machuiv to do that. If now you want to make early Shabbos, and now you machuiv a Mayriv, dava as a katan. Just like Kiddush Levana, you don't have to dafka wait until he becomes a godel. But then I told this one problem, and this is, I don't mean to be uh, sarcastic, because it's the oldest question, how does he learn when he becomes by mitzvah at night, the birch story that he said in the morning was as a cotton. How does that carry over to he becomes a godel? So I once said, but there are maybe that's why when he says a pshetel, we hack him up, because he's not allowed to learn. But the velt is saying that Abbas Oil Mamayev will pitch in and be the Birch Torah for his godless. But if you make early Shabbos, you don't have that Abba Soivam. But I told him the family and the rest of the guests should make early Shabbos and the boy could have a Mayav later. That's not a problem. Question. A true story. So the a entire bundle of colony made early Shabbos. And like, we'll, we'll assume it's an Ir Achas, which is question, we'll assume it's Ir Achas. A baby was born 
when it was early Shabbos, but before Shkia. When is the baby's bris? And the answer is push it next Friday. Because the baby's born on Friday. Early Shabbos took place on Friday. There's no doubt about it. The baby's bris is next Friday. Question. Next Friday, the baby was yellow. The mail repeatedly checked. The baby's yellow. And they decided, okay, the meal will have to be on Sunday. You can't make it on Shabbos because it's yellow. Sunday, fine. After Kabbalah Shabbos of the entire Tziba, the baby looked great. The mail says, you know, I can, I can make the meal now, but our location is Shabbos. So they were faced with a bizarre scenario. The baby is Mila Bismarck on Friday afternoon, but they all made Shabbos. And guess what? The answer is the Vadai could make the Mila right then and there. Even though their location is Shabbos and the baby's Mila is Friday, but it's a Mila Bismarck. What's important that the Mila Bismarck is Dai for Shabbos. And this is a Friday Mila Bismarck that for the rest of them is Dai for Shabbos. You're allowed to do it on that Friday afternoon. Hopefully they finish before Shkia. Let me leave you with two beautiful questions. One question is the following. Quite often we have Hanukkah, the first day falls on Shabbos. Chafei Kislev is Shabbos. Now the Minig Bnei Yeshiva certainly is the Daven Mincha always Erev Shabbos Hanukkah before Hadlokis Neves. We Daven Mincha 3 o'clock, 15, and then we light Neves. Chassidim typically are always marked with the Daven Mincha Bizman, even on Hanukkah. So they'll light the Neris, Hanukkah, and then go to Shul, Daven Mincha, and Shalom al Yisrael. But the question is, when Chav Pei Kisle falls out on Shabbos, which is once in a while, there's an additional problem. Because this person, Sindid Licht in his house, made the three brachas, Agnes Shachanaka, Asanisa, Mitzachianu. Then he comes to Shul, Daven Mincha. Says of Shleim Azalman Oyebach, he can't Daven Mincha without saying, Alanisim. Because you said Shechianu for Hanukkah, how can you go and then say Mincha without saying Shasanisim, Alanisim? So he says, even if you're not marked with Ava Mincha before Adlokas near Hanukkah, but at least this scenario, Chafei Kislev, you better Dava Mincha before, otherwise you have a problem with the Alanisim. But the Minig Oilam is not like that. And the answer probably is because the Shechianu is not bringing in Tesefes Hanukkah. There is no Tesefes Hanukkah. Shechiyon was going on the mitzvah locus neres Hanukkah. When is the mitzvah locus neres Hanukkah on Chafei Kislev? Not on Shabbos Chas Shalom, on Friday. So you're acknowledging I'm making Shechiyon on the locus neres Hanukkah on Chav Dalit, but it's not yet Tosef, it's Hanukkah, that doesn't exist. You come to Shul, you're still on Friday afternoon, and you don't have to say Alanis. And the last question Rabbi, Rabbi Gattis alluded to, when Shabbos falls on Yom Kippur, we have a Shabbos Shabbos and full of Kedusha, but we do miss the Suda Shabbos, the Kiddush. But what can we do? It says, if you have a and we have a Shabbos and Yuma Payalaf, I have a grand idea. Friday afternoon, don't call it the Suda Mavsekes, like we typically call Erev Yom Kippur Suda. Be Makabal Tesef as Shabbos. Make Kiddush. Sing all the beautiful Zemiris. Bench with Ritzay. Leave 10 minutes for Tesef as Yom Kippurim. Then be makabal to Shabbos Yom Kippurim and go into Shabbos Yom Kippur with a Suda Shabbos with Kiddush. Why don't we do that? Says the Rish of Engel, and his teretz is simple, because this is a tarot to the Sasri, because Yud Tishrei is Shabbos Shachal Yom Kippur, and you can't divide a day. Identifying it as Shabbos, not Yom Kippur, is a tarot to the Sasri. So we go into Shabbos without the Kiddush, but we go into the Shabbos Shabbos. And thank you all very much for listening. Yes, I just want one question here. There's several questions, but I'm going to get to this intriguing Dabni Meyer of later. Right. Will the Rav sanction this even if there's no minion? The, the Vilna Goyen said that, the Ferish. But the Ramayisha writes, unless you follow Minig Agra, the Chol Dava, you don't have the liberty of compromising on what's more important, which is the Mitzvah of, of Philip and Siva. One question from the floor, yeah. Go ahead. So, so the question was, if you're allowed to call on your neighbor to do malacha, if you made Shabbos early, under what circumstances is mir laka mutter? Zichem mutter erev Shabbos. The chiddush even. No, the question, what I wanted to explain is why on Shabbos you can't call a guy. That's because it's Shabbos on the world, and the amir laka is part of my shmir on Shabbos. 
But Friday afternoon, it can't be that someone is part of my Shabbos because he has Friday zone. So I meant a yid and certainly a goy lahav that will be mutter, perfectly mutter. No doubt about it. Okay. Yes, thank you very, very much for that yeah. uh, very comprehensive overview. I want to thank Shragi Shechta for arranging this all. Yes. Rav Shaga, thank you very much. I interacted with him several times. There he is. Please take uh, a look and thank the man that did it. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Rav. All right, look at that. Us. We got the uh, intelligent force.